Good morning, guys. Hey, everybody. So we're here at McDonald Creek Provincial Park. It's in the West Kootenays near Nacusp. Yep. And we were, our last video was here, but it was raining the entire time, and it was really yucky here. So we didn't really get out and do much. So I think now we're going to go and take a walk, check out the area, and check out the beach. Yeah, it's really a beautiful campground. And I mean, for having electrical hookups we're hooked up to here now as well, and kind of being located out in a more rural area in the start of the Kootenays. It's nice. Let's check out this campground. So McDonald Creek is probably one of the more like popular parks to get a booking at. I know when we tried to get this reservation, it was a struggle. Like everything was booked immediately on the two months in advance you're able to book. And yeah, just a really popular spot because I think the beach, it's a beautiful area and just, it's not actually like that, that big either in reality, but it's like a ghost town here. I think the bad weather this weekend and also the forest fires, and the whole province have probably canceled a lot of people's plans, but man, it probably like half the campground it seems empty at least so far. When we go on our walk here, we'll see what the rest of the campground looks like, but in our area, it's like pretty empty. So very strange, but kind of nice. Rookie parenting mistake 101, holding your baby and going for a walkabout and forgetting a burp slash spit up claw. Yeah. It's getting close to Chloe's bedtime, so we're heading back. We found a pretty cool map. It showed a map of the park, but it also had a map of a bunch of stuff to do in the Kootenays area. So we're gonna review that and kind of make a bit of plans for the upcoming days. But we're in campsite 31 here right now. Look at this. Big open, it was long, and then boom, that lake view right there. There are really nice campsites here on the lake. It's basically just one straight road on the way in. You either camp on the lake or you camp across from the lake, but pretty sweet views here. This is a really nice campground, honestly. We love it. Alrighty, so Chloe went down for her nap. Thank goodness she's actually resting pretty good here. So we're gonna have a little bit of lunch outside here today. Got some hamburgers on the go. And we have one corn cob left because I happened to buy three corn cobs. There's only two of us, of course, so I'm not quite sure why I wouldn't <laughs> have bought an even number and I chose to buy an odd number, but we got it grilling up and going there. We got some cherries we bought locally in Salmon Arm before we left. So what do you think, Alicia? Pretty good lunchtime? Pretty good lunchtime. We're having, well, not having. It's nice to cook outside and like enjoy the outdoors and stuff, obviously, but we're having to cook outside because I don't know, I feel bad waking Chloe up after she's just gone down for her nap and yeah. then cooking inside. Man, that's one thing that we noticed so far camping with a baby is that we kind of wish we had more space. It'd be really nice to have a dedicated like bedroom blocked off area where she can nap and we can put her to sleep and everything without somebody doing dishes and waking her up or yeah. cooking and yeah. Yeah, because of our RV, I mean, it's been a great size for us. It still works good for us as a family, but I mean, Chloe sleeps basically right in the middle near the dinette there. so. Ooh, a bee. Mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't go in the lens. But yeah, Chloe sleeps right near the dinette there. So if she's sleeping there, you're basically always having to work and walk around her crib. And I mean, you don't want to wake her up, of course, when she needs her naps. So outside is the best bet. But like Alicia mentioned, like a travel trailer, for example, you could have the front bedroom with the sliding door. She could go to sleep in there and we could still have a living space that we wouldn't worry about her. So mm -hmm. maybe someday we'll look into a travel trailer. Who knows? But. Anyways though, nice sunny day after the rain. Take advantage of sitting out here and enjoy some burgers. Oh 
That beach is so nice down there. It's huge. It runs down forever. It's a small campground and it hasn't been too busy because of the rain and smoke and fires and everything. So we had a huge beach to ourselves. It is a little cold, mind you, though, so be prepared for that. Me and Chloe are sitting here now. We have Chloe here in her little high chair. We got her up on the table, even. And she's supervising, looking forward as Mom starts cooking some dinner. Oh. So for now, she's getting fussy all of a sudden. What's the matter, buddy? Yeah. Chloe's got this chair. Now that her neck got is so much stronger and she can sit up and look around so well. She's really been enjoying having some chair time once in a while. And Alicia's cooking some fish tacos for dinner here tonight. We're gonna have a little bit of a taco night. Looks like we might even catch a little bit of a sunset coming in. Anywho, let's dive into some tacos here. Okay, so I felt like an easy dinner option tonight, which is why we chose fish tacos. We just thawed some frozen fish, some frozen tilapia. I just seasoned it with some like taco seasoning and salt and pepper. Really easy. Just got some onions, some coleslaw, and some of these tomatoes. Oh. These are Luke's homegrown tomatoes. He has a garden back at home. He's been growing a bunch of stuff, and those tomatoes are one of them. And yeah, I'm just gonna cook up the shrimp here, put it in the taco, add some stuff. Nice easy dinner for a lazy day. Also, this is by far the best way to have your taco is on an open flame, just toast it up. Mm. We've had a delicious little dinner here. We're gonna start winding down for the night. Kitty Cat is back outside with us here. She's making the adventure with us this trip, so she's all munching on some grass and enjoying the area. There's actually little groundhog, prairie dog type guys here that are burrowed in the ground too, and I'm curious if they'll pop out so Cat can see them and get a little chatter on and have a little reaction to the wildlife, but she's happy to be outside along here. Alicia's starting a little project over there we'll share with you in a second, but I also want to share with you real quick, maybe in my opinion, a little bit of a lack of foresight in the electrical hookups here, but come check this out quick. So we have electrical hookups here, like I've mentioned, loving that. So great having hookups, but they have 50 amp, 30 amp and 15 amp here. So 50 amp, that's a nice treat to have. So I've busted out our adapter and we're dongled in there. Ooh, mosquito is getting me too. They're coming out pretty good right now, but it goes in and you can see over here, there's this plastic lip, which hangs down here. And our red dog bone adapter, that guy overhangs pretty well and that fits. I wasn't gonna bother with 50 amp originally, but if I jump around to this side here now, this one, same thing. You can see there's this, oh, mosquitoes, no. You can see there's this giant lip in here. And then when you put the 30 amp in there, it actually doesn't fit and it sits on like a 45 degree angle hanging out and that didn't seem very, I don't know, safe, especially when it was raining heavy and it's kind of in out. So luckily that adapter got us the 50 amp anyways, but I wanted to just come along and like take a knife and just cut out from here to here so stuff can hang down and you can hang your cord down, right? It seems kind of weird to have this all in the way because again, it was on like a 45 degree angle half in and it was kind of sketchy, but we got it covered and I'm still glad to have electrical. Now to get over to our thermosel because these mosquitoes are pretty bad out here in the Kootenays actually so far. So for those of you that don't know what a thermosel is, this right here is a thermosel. Basically you put a little butane cartridge in the bottom there, this little blue packet on top that's smoking out, and it's a kind of mosquito repellent basically. When it's during fire ban season, those mosquito coils you use, you're actually not allowed to use those during fire ban season either we've been informed. I think we didn't know that before but we don't use those, we use this. but. If you have those mosquito coils, you can't use them during forest fire season, but you can use these because they're butane, just like you can't have a campfire, but you can use your propane firing. So once this thing gets going, that blue packet gets a little hotter and it puts out it, and it's also odorless though. So we wanted to switch to that as well, having Chloe with us of course now, but we'll get this going. I think it says it gives you about a 15 foot kind of radius bubble around, it's what the box shows. You can get them at Canadian Tire, you can buy the refills, 
I think I worked it out to like $1.50 an hour or something like that it would cost to run it. So that's pretty inexpensive at least. The mosquitoes are still circling right now, but we just turned it on. So give it some time to get preheated quick here. Okay, so my project that Luke alluded to is, I'll pop up a picture of it now, but I'm trying to make this like bunny rabbit rattle thing for Chloe, except I'm trying to find the end of this ball of yarn and I cannot for the life of me find it. I'm sure some of you at home are laughing at me right now, but like, what the heck? It's supposed to be in the center, right? Oh. Is it the end sticking out the bottom? On the other side? No. Okay, well, I just took all the insides out, so I'm assuming I'll find the end in here, but yeah, I'll show you my progress that I get on this tonight. far as I got <laughs> I'm definitely not a crocheter like I've done one little project before and so yeah I think it looks like good though yeah. like everything is tight ish and I think I got my counting all right and stuff so it's looking pretty good so far I've got a little bit more to go on the body obviously and I'm gonna stuff it and make that little rattle thing but yeah it's getting pretty late now I think we're gonna head to bed yep I probably stayed up crocheting a little bit too <laughs> long. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna head to bed because tomorrow we've got a huge day. It's gonna be our next video, but we're heading down towards Nelson, which I'm really, really excited about. I've never been to Nelson, right? I don't think we've ever like walked through Nelson at least. Um, we might've drove through a long time ago with Luke's family, but yeah, I was super excited about Nelson. And then we're gonna head over to our next provincial park campground, which should be pretty cool as well. Yeah, I think we got almost two and a half hours of driving at least or something deeper into the Kootenays. So, should be some cool scenery, new areas, a few historic towns and stuff to check out. And then another campground you might be able to add to your list that has electric hookups. So, we'll see how it looks when we get there. Anyways, thanks for tuning in there, guys. Subscribe down below if you're new. Love to have you join the adventures with us. Otherwise, if you've been around with us, of course, give the video a like. Appreciate having you here. And we'll catch you in the next video otherwise, friends. See you guys. Night.